Welcome to Fireside Outreach, in which we speak to industry leaders or corporate leaders uh, from a deep dive perspective, looking into the strategy or technology or processes. And I have with me Nidhi Pandey, uh, who's a technology strategist at the Hewlett Packard Enterprises India uh, unit. Welcome to the show, Nidhi. And uh, let me first begin by introducing you to the audience with a fancy term, edge to cloud. You know, edge to cloud is a fascinating term that encompasses nearly everything that's happening in the world of computing today, uh, from the internet of things that has sensors at street corners, feeding in information to the other end where there's high power supercomputing going on with fancy data analytics, which tells me stuff about myself that I didn't know. <laughs> and of course, the internet is in the middle of all this. Sounds like science fiction to me. Uh, Nidhi, tell me, what has made all this possible in technological terms? What are these developments? So, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, the warm welcome. Uh, we, uh, when we start looking at it, you know, we just, just take a step back and pause and start looking at how technology used to be. I mean, we, we've come from floppy drives to probably, you know, a very small, uh, you know, having this, you know, GVs and GVs of storage in a very small, small, small kind of a dump drive. So uh, if you start looking at it, the way the technology, uh, you know, the continued innovation that has been happening in the technology end. When we start looking at a uh, beta compute, storage, networking, or even as a matter of fact, in the application architectures, we are seeing that technology at one point of time was probably a supporter. It was looked upon more as a supporter role. It graduated to more of an enabler. And right now, if you start looking at it in the middle of pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. it looks like it has become the foundation or a bedrock of a you know digital economy. So, at the center of it all, actually. Yeah. Yes, yes. So if if we start looking at the whole focus now, I have you know we start looking at all business models. Uh, when you spe specifically during the trying times that we're going through right now, uh, most of us have uh, you know moved away from brick and mortars are actually doing all everything digital, digital, digital. You're just sitting at your uh, you know probably at a desk or probably lay you lay on a bed and you order right from groceries to clothing to you know electronics to anything that you want. So the whole evolution of technology that has happened in terms of the various building blocks that come together has made this uh, you know, possible. And like you rightly said, it looks like being in a sci-fi sci movie, I would rather say, uh, just that the movie will get a bit better as we move around. <laughs> uh, because you know, we, it's just coming together. It just started to get uh, coming together. So there is a pandemic has just put forward the whole uh, digital digital. We kept hearing about you know digital transformation. Everybody needs to have a strategy. But if I look at the current times, that has just made everybody take a giant leap. You know, you have to start at some level because everything has been disrupted. So that's right, as you rightly said, at the heart, at the core, at the center of everything, every business, we are finding technology right now. So it's, it's a huge shift when we start looking at it. It moves from being a supporter to becoming a core part of a business. So the whole technology innovation has made that possible. I just summarized that, uh, that, that statement. Mm -hmm. Nidhi, but I'm very keen to know and more like, you know, since we were on science fiction, might as well, uh, might as well make it more exciting by trying to sketch out scenarios, you know, in the coming days, like uh, what does edge to cloud mean in the coming days or something that could be happening right now that people watching this show may not know about uh, in terms of, let's say, a case study or an example. Uh, give me some GWIS stuff maybe that's happening that we couldn't imagine 20 years ago or 10 years ago. So uh, there are a lot of things when we start talking about, you know, while we're speaking, we keep hearing about all those self-driving, you know, autonomous, complete cars. But, uh, and if, if you go away further, you would start looking at, you know, having a self-driving kind of uh, stores coming up, brick and mortar stores coming up with self-driving self kind of capability. Just extending it a bit further, we start looking at how our daily lives, uh, you know, may end up being or, you know, could go far beyond that. What I'm saying, it's all possible in bits and pieces. 
so it may it may be that you know we your day starts our day starts with brushing our uh, you know teeth and uh, probably sensors tell you that the toothbrush is probably needs to be replaced the head needs to be replaced or uh, you know you don't have the right amount of paste things like that from there they can graduate a bit further into you know integrating the entire household supply into the uh, into the supply chain ecosystem of the nearby mass the choice is mass that we have that you know this choice is item that is if you preferred is running out of stock in the in the in your own supplies uh, stock inventory and you can place an order right away so it's it's all possible if you start looking at it it are connected with these things that are coming up so there are host of things that are happening a host of things that i'm talking about will need stitching of these things together to come back so it's 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 like like i said the movie has just started and we we may exciting times ahead we would get to see it can better yeah. so let's get down to a bit of earth you know i know all this is possible let's say for hewlett packard enterprise only when the customers bring in more of these technologies so i would be very keen to know from a corporate or enterprise perspective how does edge to cloud deployment take place uh, in companies that Okay, so uh, taking taking a cue from you know what is happening right now when we start looking at the whole pandemic scenario, so a lot of safety measures. If you know there are those thermal sensors and biomet uh, biometric sensor that tell you know whether somebody is well, what is the temperature and all. Now that can all be pushed to cloud. You know you can have sensors around it. You can keep cameras because recording. Say, uh, Miss Didi or Mr. Ma, uh, you know, Mr. Madhavan has logged in. What is his temperature? the assessment can be made then and there saying that you know whether they are ill they are fit to report to work or an alarm needs to be raised now this is what is edge this is all happening here now when we are in that mode and On that's the fly. The yes so it it's more momentous if we start looking at it so that's what the edge is all about and that's why i said we will see a swarm of edges coming together and it is a host of possibilities that are there but this is one thing that's happening right now in terms of uh, how uh, you know enterprises are uh, embracing it uh, typically if we move to uh, another a more cut, uh, more enterprise enterprise kind of a scenario which is not that much consumer touch facing we start looking at it you know uh, oil exploration and those kind of things you can have mm -hmm. uh, you know the site surveys and that all being done by technology your uh, you know oil rigs mm -hmm. that monitor these can be on the edge because you need to take immediate actions there however some insights may need years of analysis or months of analysis or you know days of analysis to do that you push that data towards cloud so it's it's like a lot of uh, you know multi tiering that's happening that uh, was not there in terms of infrastructure uh, is i so we say mm -hmm. so that, that's what would happen in the edge to cloud world so we would have some momentous decisions that need to be done at edge end and some would need you know years of analysis in terms of data for putting it together that would still be pushed to cloud so there would be a, a mix of what we're looking at before bringing you down to earth so to speak let me ask one more question on what we were discussing before which is that obviously all this capabilities cannot come from in house so you have partnerships built in at the back end and also you have your own in house r&d right yes yes so uh, you were right i mean like uh, it's what we were talking about like you spoke about it's analogous to you know a lot of pieces coming together and putting it together so obviously uh, you know it's not something that can spin to life uh, you know without continued r and d investments not just that there've been some acquisitions that we made in terms of how uh, how we see this for going and what are the complementing capabilities that can help our customers mm -hmm. so there's been acquisitions on that not just that uh, we also uh, you know uh, forayed into having a, a digital catalyst kind of a program where we in incubating with the startups and giving them a platform and seeing some synergies and seeing how would we put together so it's it's a big ecosystem that's coming to life and uh, there would be an opportunity for uh, everyone to have a play and for larger enterprises for long you know legacy enterprises like us uh the uh, responsibility would be a little more in terms of you know putting these pieces together and bringing them uh to some usable advantage for to the customers so yeah what you said is yeah. okay i think if it's not a supply chain let's talk about it in terms of 
a, a full service thali meal in yes. technological yes. terms. But that's what brings me to India, you know. I'm very curious to know how is edge to cloud relevant for Indian companies. Many of them are so conscious about budgets and, uh, you know, they might find this expensive or too much visionary. How do you look at that, uh, Nidhi? So uh, that's an interesting bit. Uh, while we are speaking, there are a lot of uh, a lot of companies that are actually starting to look at it. Typically, I picked up the example of oil rigs and stuff like that. Where uh, we would see specifically in the manufacturing area, where you know the um, like I said, the pandemic has just you know made that uh, that you don't have the luxury to think for years on the strategy. You start acting on it now. So uh, the manufacturing industry itself has seen some kind of, you know, that the, the technology has not been leveraged to that an extent and probably some kind of process automation can bring in a lot of efficiencies. A lot can be done with technology. So while we are speaking, edge in some way or shape or form is already there is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the edge to cloud that we talk about is typically, uh, you know, it, it, it would be, uh, uh, it will not be fair to uh, talk without it, without the 5G. Uh, because the whole spin around real time, you know, uh, you know, low latency thing that comes with the whole five G thing. So when you're talking about edge, how edge, how much edge is relevant to India? Edge is not something that is, uh, you know, relevant to a specific geography or a specific industry. Now, if you if you start looking at the impact is spanning across geos and industries, and for um, for especially uh, a country like us. It would become more a necessity than a choice, uh, is what I feel. Uh, we have the market size, the biggest market size, if you start looking at us, China. And uh, what information is happening at the end, it would not be possible to take it back into a central piece and do everything at the central piece. So, edge to cloud is very, very relevant. I would say even more so. There may be, uh, you know, consciousness, uh, budget consciousness around it because it's still an evolving area. Use cases are evolving. Uh, all kind of industries are grappling with what is, uh, what would be the first step to take it. But that's where the industry, uh, the whole technology industry, is also responding and uh, coming up with, uh, you know, innovative offerings which can lower the entry barriers. Like we uh, start looking at uh, what HP is trying to do. Uh, we are unlocking a complete portfolio and a consumption model under the green offering, which brings some respite uh, and gives uh, the you know organizations to take a more pragmatic approach towards this, if I can say. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. But in building pragmatism into it and even kind of guiding customers into something that they want, but they themselves don't know what they really want. It's that kind of a scenario as I see it. And does this mean there is a room for consultants and intermediaries, maybe highly paid ones, or you know, is it as simple as turning a tap on call a platform as a service? Uh, so it is. It is. You know, it's not a straight answer. I'll be honest. I mean, it's not. Uh, <laughs> I'll not be honest if I say it's. You know, it's as simple <laughs> as that. Uh, like I said, it's a pieces that are coming together. So yeah, obviously there'll be room for. Uh, everyone to contribute in some way. So we may need specialized analysis of what use cases are going to be pertinent for an industry. So mm -hmm. an A industry, say, we talk about a retail store, it may be behaving very differently than probably a, you know, a complete, complete manufacturing base uh, where you know, only things are getting manufactured. Their needs may be so different that exact application, what use cases will bring them value, where it will be worth the investment uh, would something that would need a bit of validation uh, before you know taking that hugely. And uh, like I said, uh, that is something that uh, we as HP have that expertise, even in terms of the rich, uh, you know, uh, rich investment in uh, the innovations that we've done, the whole R&D expertise that we bring in. We have that expertise to become the technology partner uh, to guide our customers to the things that they should be looking. That's interesting. But let me come back to the basics. You know, you know, the way you're putting it is there's a huge amount of complexity and sophisticated technologies at play. Let me get a little personal there, you know, in terms of I'm always curious to know what, you know, very impressed by technology terms like technology architect and technology strategists. And there's a whole amount of, you know, uh, thinking that you bring to the table for HPE. 
So, but I just noticed that you earlier worked for Vodafone and Huawei, which means you basically literally transfers, I mean, came come through a universe of handheld devices and uh, network equipment. And uh, so how does that come in handy? Does your experience come in handy when you um, do business in edge to cloud for HPE? Yeah, uh, that's that's uh, that's quite an interesting question. Uh, so, uh, what uh, I mean when you start looking at the two names, typically Vodafone and Huawei, they, they do they operate even though they operate in the same industry. Their view of the industry is different because one is uh, you know employed in the is is business de deployed more in the capacity of an operator, while another is more on the supplier side. So, if we start looking at it. Uh, you know, these have helped me gain a more holistic view as a, as in how does the entire ecosystem come? And uh, it is, it has personally helped me in rounding up the entire conversation. Having experienced both sides of the table, it's easier to understand uh, what the customer expectations would be if they're talking about a certain thing. So we, uh, you know, I, I recollect I, I had a discussion. I had some in some some part of you know very anecdotal thing. I had some uh, so somebody remarked to me that you know you technologies get uh, technologies get so lost in the uh, complete you know love for technology that you forget you're there to serve a business. And it sticks to me. I mean, after years, I have remembered because this, this whole statement has stuck around for some a while. So it helps me round up that, and that that does bring in an advantage in terms of what I do in HP uh, in and out on a daily basis. Because these topics that we've been talking about, uh, you know, which sounded very complex, I mean, they can be decomposed into something that is a smaller building block and made easier to manage. And that's what the whole rounding up of the conversation across, you know, going across the spectrum and having worked uh, in companies like that has given me. Uh, so what it helps uh, me in HP is to develop more fruitful conversations that, uh, talk about bringing more outcome based focus which is what uh, we as company uh, you know talk about that let's have more outcome based conversations when you're talking to our customer so it's mm -hmm. aspirationally aligned towards uh, you know uh, aspirational goals that the whole rounding up of the ecosystem helps put it in terms of what would it mean for the customer and not just right. you know the stock technology pushing that's interesting, Nidhi, because it reminds me of cricket, strangely. You know, they say that if you've been in the crease long enough, the cricket ball starts looking like a football. So that you can play, you know, better shots, as it were, because the sight becomes better, which is where I think experience comes in handy, both for you as an individual and for HPE as a, a, a giant company, which aggregates various kinds of technologies. It's been great talking to you, Nidhi, and uh, is wishing you all the best. And... Thank you for being on Fireside Outreach. Thank you, Mr. Madhavan. It was nice. I, in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal a few of your lines. I love them so much. And so there we are. Uh, complex technologies being offered in a platform as a service basically means, from a corporate point of view, something as easy as opening a Gmail account for ordinary people, but it's not so simple as it seems, which is why companies like HPE exist in the first place to make complex things look simple, at least for the customers. And guess what? They get uh, paid that extra premium for that. Thank you for being on Fireside Outreach.